Angie here. Today I get to talk to Silky and Top Cat of Death of Guitar Pop. Really excited for that. Uh, they are a two-tone Scott revivalist band, and I think that's what the world needs right now. Uh, it's freezing here in Boston. First really cold day we've had, and I've already thrown out my back. So forgive me if I look a little pain throughout this. Um, hopefully my excitement will get me through, which no doubt it will. Um, thankfully, I have my Scott Club Essex varsity jacket to keep me nice and toasty, um, because like I said, it is freezing, especially down on my first floor. But anyway, I digress. Uh, I've been really excited about talking to these guys, so why waste any more time? And let's get on with it, shall we? Here we go. Sure, sure. Hi, guys. Nice jacket. Hi, Angie. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it is uh, very cold here in Boston today, so it's a perfect opportunity to get that. <laughs> thank great. you, thank you. It's super comfy. Oh, yeah, nice jackets, aren't they? They really are. They really are. I'm I'm a horror movie fan, and I made a mistake of buying. I think it was like a Captain Spaulding varsity jacket off of Wish.com. Thing wow. fell apart. Literally fell apart. But I digress. So how are you guys today? Yeah, we're good, well. thanks. Uh, yeah, just an average November day in Essex, really. It hasn't really got light today, has it? Just overcast, all overcast, day, maybe. cloudy. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? Are you well? I am well. I am well. Although, you know, literally our first really cold day in Boston, and I've already messed up my back. So I think I beat my personal best. We were just um, checking where Boston was on the map just to make sure we didn't make any blunders. So you're far <laughs> north, aren't you? Um, yeah, we're in the northeast. You know, not quite as far north as our buddies in Maine, but yeah, we're feeling it, especially on the coast. Does it get cold up there in the winter then? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lots of snow, lots of cold, lots of angry drivers with no patience. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you born and bred Boston or...? I am. Um, we call ourselves mass holes, which I am born and bred. Um, definitely. My dad's a mass hole. My mom's from Mississippi, which is kind of weird. It's kind of weird to throw that in the mix. But Is it ma mass hole, did you say? Is that like, because Massachusetts yeah. is a... Yeah. Uh, we wear that with a badge of pride. We love do. it. <laughs> so how did you get into Scar, Angie? I, well, I'm supposed to be interviewing you guys, first of all, but <laughs> I got into Scar... Um, at a very early age. I don't, have you heard of the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones? Yeah, of yeah, course. Of course yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, they're from here. Um, yeah, yeah. So I kind of grew up just with that. And, yeah. you know, the more I got into them and Bim Scala Bam, it was just sort of a natural progression to go backwards in time. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's not only meaningful music, but it's just so happy. Yeah, you know, it's really difficult to be like depressed or upset when you're listening. Yeah, to it. definitely can let off a lot of steam listening to Scar, can't you? Yeah, Absolutely, certainly a happy place. Isn't yeah, it, Scar music. and it's important in these times we're all living in as well. Mm. So it's good to Absolutely. know we can smile on people's faces. Mm. Yeah, it, it's kind of funny. I have a quick story. Um, my father passed away in 2016, and as I was going through his things. I found a Desmond Decker 45. Oh, now, I, I never knew my father like Scott. And looking back on my life, it's like, oh, that's why he went out of his way to buy me this album or this album. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. Oh, but enough about me. <laughs> you guys are like what every musician aspires to be. I mean, tell me how you're handling this homegrown success. Oh, thank you. Yeah, cheers. Uh, I don't know. We just we we just keep very grounded, don't we? We're, we're grafters, you know. We're always we we do everything ourselves. So manage the band, book the band, all the merch fulfillment stuff is yeah. all out of uh, Top Cat's garage. Yeah. So we're grafting every day. Do you know what I mean? And I guess with like the there's a bit of disconnect at the moment because obviously we aren't playing shows. Um, so obviously we feel like there's this, we've got this like intimacy with our fans on the social media, which is great. And the fan club and we do the monthly live chat on zoom, but I guess, I don't know, like it has taken off quite a bit this year in particular. Yeah. Um, but, but the weird thing is we haven't been out playing shows. So we've not really 
So it's feels we're a little like bit detached from it. Yeah, you know? it feels like it's growing, but we haven't actually witnessed the growth up close yet. So. Yeah, yeah. Like we see, like obviously, like venues selling out and and albums flying off the shelves, which is amazing and such a buzz. Um, but yeah, we've only really experienced like flashes of it, like out on the road. You know what I mean? We're still quite a new band when it comes to to touring and stuff. So we had like a few big moments at the festivals last yeah. year where we really noticed, like, wow, this is fucking nuts. Um, and and the London shows we've we've done of and, and Scotland been, as well have, yeah. have been lively, haven't they? So we've had flashes of it, but I feel like we've not really been able because of because of what's happened this year it's 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 a weird thing like we can't we're definitely in a privileged position and we can't moan about uh obviously it's shit for every musician and every music fan like not being able to go to to, to play or, or see a live show at the moment but i feel very uh very very blessed that we've still been able to to promote our music and create content and do this crowdfunding campaign for the new record so yeah like for example we we're releasing an album next year and we're recording that album now and that wouldn't that was brought forward because of the circumstances of this year so it's like from sort of like a bit of a phoenix from the ashes kind of thing do you know what i mean like there's a silver lining there, yeah, isn't there thankfully yeah. yeah which we feel very very blessed about so like something we've managed to find some good come from all of it so uh, yeah, yeah can't be too down about it yeah and we're and like yeah it just it does but it blows us away it does blow us away yeah the, it's crazy. the love um feels like we've got like between us and the fans because it's all diy feels like we've got a really special thing that's growing at the moment yeah. and it just feels a privilege yeah, to be to be yeah involved and part of it and spearheading it it's just weird you know it's crazy it must be um you know i think this like you said, this is a great time to kind of regroup, create some yeah. new music, you know, and in the grand scheme of things, bands do that all the time. Mm. You know, there's a lot, a lot of downtime between touring or, but being a ska band, you know, you, you do want to get out there and, you know, mm. virtual shows, they do a lot of that here in Boston where uh, mm. it's just not the same sitting in front of your phone. <laughs> Yeah, and it yeah. never will be, and that's a good yeah. thing because it means we'll always have that live music, won't we? But absolutely. Yeah. Now you got to perform with Neville Staple. Yes. Mm. That yeah, must have been. How was that for you guys? Yeah, incredible. Uh, Neville's such a cool guy. We were definitely nervous, weren't we, on that first yeah. day when he came down? We were in awe of him. You know, it's like someone from the fucking specials down at the studio, and this yeah. was like our a fourth single we didn't even have a, a full album out at that point and like the specials and i don't know how big the specials are in america but like here it's like you know it's like the beatles or something like that they're like the royalty one of those bands yeah. that are just like the clash or something like that who are just cool as fuck and oh yeah yeah we love we life. love the specials. yeah they're part of your life like you don't ever like have a point in your life where you're not you don't know the specials, do you? Like Madness as well. Yeah, definitely. Like they're just part of the British fabric of life sort of thing. Yeah, a huge part of our pop culture. Yeah. yeah. So we were kind of fan... Well, not fanboy. I mean, I'd like to... We were. Cold, we definitely but... shoved a, a specials vinyl in his face and got it signed. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> had about two minutes of him getting there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was nuts. We literally... So, so he came, him and... and um, and Christine and the band had been in Japan, hadn't they? Yeah. And they'd literally just come off of a flight from Japan and driven down. I think they had a few hours back home in Coventry and then, and then drove down to the session. Um, and he, he jumped in the booth in the studio and was in and smashed his vocals out in like two hours. And then there's like a, where we record, there's like a film studio next door. So we literally just jumped in there, threw the, uh, the varsity jackets on, and and smash the video out in like another two three hours yeah. and that was it It was all done in about five hours and it was it like was this so, rush wasn't it yeah it was just it was nuts like and when he left it was like fuck like that was such a such a trip but <laughs> but we've met him a few times since so um so christine his his wife uh, who's in the band with organizes a festival over here twice a year called skarmouth um so We've 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 played that a few times, um, and yeah, we like well, the first time we went there, we sat and had breakfast with Neville, didn't yeah. we? Me, you, and George, um, 
and we've we've been on like festival lineups with him and stuff and he's yeah they've become both both Neville and Christine have become dear friends of ours and yeah yeah, and yeah. they're so supportive of us and they all yeah ways, and it's I mean? it's just a huge honor to have yeah have someone from the specials like as, yeah. as an advocate or whatever you know yeah. it's crazy well you know it's understandable that he would be supportive of you guys I mean two tone sky revival those are my new three favorite words they really are um, <laughs> here in the states part. here in the states uh most people take their ska in ska punk form yeah and yeah. you know that's that definitely is good and is very enjoyable but there's very few that take it back to its roots um mm -hmm. one of the bands i mentioned them scala them they're one of the bands that really you know takes it back to true ska and uh cool. yeah i don't i've not really listened to them i've heard of them but i need to check them out yeah i do as well you definitely do see i'm blessed being in boston because they're from here too um, <laughs> We, I often wonder how people in like Kansas and Ohio deal with living where they live because they definitely yeah. don't have the exposure. Um, but definitely check them out. Yeah, they're really, really good. I actually got them to play my wedding, which was insane. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. We had a, we had a two tone wedding. It was pretty cool. So three totally crowdfunded albums. Mm. Yeah. What has been the most uh, aside from the obvious, what is the most crucial aspect, do you think, of getting that kind of response? Um, well, initially, it was um, sort of social media driven, wasn't it? Because we hadn't been out on the road by the time we'd, we hadn't even played a gig by the time we were crowdfunding the first album. No, yeah. I so we put Ricky Old Train out and um, obviously we were like hoping for you know, you want every song to do well, but I think we kind of went into it. We'd both just had like a bit of a, we'd come out the other, we'd like been chewed up and spat out of our other bands. And yeah. a little bit. Had like record deals that didn't work out and all that kind of shit, you know? So yeah, we were, we were still sort of licking our wounds a bit. Yeah. And it was just very much uh, a, a bit of a vanity project for us in the beginning, wasn't it? Just a bit of a laugh. Like we just wanted to have some fun. Like we were genuinely that doing the like wrote the tunes and rehearsing the tunes in Silky's Nan's little summer house at the end of her garden, and that it was like proper taking it back to basics for us. So yeah, yeah, it was because that was in my first band when I was like fifteen. That's where we used to rehearse down in like the summer house at my nan's gaff, and. Uh, so yeah, there was some kind of weird like we we just wanted to I wanted to get back down there and and recapture some of that sort of uh, like the, that that honeymoon period that teenage excitement of being in your first band because uh, yeah and 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 so it, it was yeah it was very much all just sort of a bit of bit of fun and a laugh to begin with yeah. but I guess deep down we've always been like really sort of hard working musicians that want a career in music so that that was sort of probably still within us and I guess what really when things started to to gain momentum was we put rickety old train out um and and put the music video like out a, about September 2016 yeah. it was around that time when it like October, se September yeah. October and then just for a bit of a, a laugh, we we put like 150 quid into a Facebook advert and targeted fans of specials and madness. And bearing in mind, we've been in bands before and tried all this kind of stuff and just nothing ever really seemed to connect. Um, almost immediately, we were getting comments and likes and shares and messages. And I can remember the ad had been live for like a couple of days. And I was I was at work and got this message through on my phone and there's this guy and he was like, this is the band I've been waiting for since the specials. And I was like, fucking hell, like, <laughs> this, is, this is taking yeah. off. Um, so, yeah, as soon as we we soon as we discovered that we could get the traction and reach the audience uh, through the Facebook ad platform, we just sort of decided to go out. Right, well, this is this is good. We're having great fun making the music and it was great fun making that video. Um, we were very into like building like that community aspect of it. So like we religiously made sure we reply to every message, every comment personally, yeah. like, and that's how we sort of built up 
like a yeah is it a community is that the word yeah i would say and so, that yeah. sort of led to us believing that oh, we think people you know are in our corner they want us to do well and they want to be a part of this and like it felt like it wasn't just me and silks it felt like a whole like load of people had kind of got on board with what this thing we were trying to do mm. and that sort of led us to the point where well we've got enough tunes to do an album why don't we just fucking stick our necks out and yeah. go for it really I, I think we just almost like immediately like felt a sense of responsibility with it because there were loads of people saying oh, this is the band we've been waiting for since like yeah. two-tone and when are you guys going to do an album and it was like fuck we should really push this do you know yeah. what i mean and uh so i guess yeah obviously the social media marketing aspect is is one thing obviously the fact that um people were crying out for for some kind of two-time revival um and then just yeah it just comes down to us just being relentless with it really and just working our asses off and and um and making lots of music filming lots of videos and and yeah, yeah. just working hard really it is mate yeah and it's definitely paying off. I mean, I don't know of many other bands, aside from like the specials, actually. Like, literally every day I wake up and one of your songs is stuck in my head all day long. <laughs> and it's probably the one time I don't mind it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll be walking around my house and all of a sudden I'll be like, skinhead reggae. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Have you got a favorite? Uh, my favorite's Four Pound Cinema. Nice. Oh, really? Yeah, I've annoyed my husband because every time I hear that, I have to play it again and then again. <laughs> it's a good driving song. It really is. Yeah. Thank you. Quite, quite deep, that one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it definitely sounds it, yeah. Um, random question, because I have to ask, is that Suggs at the end of your video? Um, of course, the name escapes me right now. <laughs> Uh, no, there's uh, Suggs isn't in any of our videos. Um, I'm trying to think what you might be thinking. Um, this guy is the bollocks. Is it when we're yes. cleaning the Bentley? Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Because nah. I'm like, is it? Is it not? Kind of looks like him, but I didn't think it was. <laughs> yeah. Now, one day we'll get Suggsy involved. Yeah. But... <laughs> we got him. Yeah, we were lucky we're enough to. We, we, we did something with. Um, with Bedders. with Bedders from Madness, the bass player, um, which was really cool. We got to perform like a Madness song with him. He was doing like a Q&A for like 40 years of One Step Beyond. And we were invited there to go and uh, to do the prints with him, which was which yeah. was great, wasn't it? It's like a little uh, swanky sort of gentleman's club. In yeah, Soho. it was a weird like, setup, like, wasn't it? But it worked. Well, I'm moving up in the world. Yeah, <laughs> it would be, that. that's the dream really, to get Suggs on a track, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think you're on your way there. You know, it's definitely well within the realm of possibility. Fingers crossed. <laughs> you know, because I think you have the respect of all the original two-tone bands because you're you're carrying on their legacy and creating a new generation of two-tone fans. Yeah, that's and, kind of the dream. That if someone listens to us who's younger, then it puts them on to madness. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it puts them on to specials It'll or, be the, like the, or the gateway drug. The gateway <laughs> yeah. drug, yeah. <laughs> But it's also sort of that continuation too, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, funnily enough, before we started the band, I think one of the things that inspired it was there's like a noisy documentary series, series and one of the episodes was about Scar and the sort of like the scene around the world. And this was probably like 2015, 2016 has come out. And I can remember being so inspired by it. And I was thinking like, because Madness were like my first the first band I ever loved as a kid, like my parents um, got me the the VHS of Divine Madness, which was like all their music videos. And I used to be skanking in front of the telly at like f five years old watching it. Um, not much has changed, does it really? Not really, no. And uh, and I didn't, but I didn't really get into Scar and like binge it and go back through the years and 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 yeah until until I'd watched that documentary really, and um, and that was. Yeah, I guess when we started, it was like, I wonder if we could do something to fly the flag and keep, yeah. just play our small part in like keeping it going. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you're definitely doing that. Like, I think there was a void in the music world, especially where Scott is concerned, um, to get back to that original song, get back to what it's all about. 
Um, so kudos for you guys for doing that. I mean, you, you've, you've filled a massive demand. And, uh, you know, I think more people stateside should definitely know about you guys. I would say let's try to get you over here, but that's God knows when that could possibly happen. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. definitely will do it. We just, at the moment, all of us in music have just got to sort of bide our time a little bit, haven't we? And just, we've all got to get through this thing that's sort of been thrust upon us. And uh, yeah, then we can have a bit of fun. Yeah, I mean, we here in New England, we have local ska festivals every year. And uh, it's been a bit of a disappointment. Um, this summer, we were supposed to have two Tibbert perform. And uh, yeah, ma'am. Yeah, and that was a real tragedy, you know. But, yeah, uh, I was hoping to catch the, uh, he was doing a tour over here as well. And I was hoping to go to, to the Margate gig, but yeah, yeah. gutted. I've, I've, I never got to see two. So I watched his Glastonbury set. Uh, yeah, that yeah, was sick, few months it? ago. Yeah, it's it a nice player, isn't it? Yeah, so good that. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a shame. But like I said, you know, once we get back into the festival, swing of things someday uh, hopefully soon yeah mm. we gotta get you guys out here you oh, know? Yeah, it'd be, it would, would be you know, it's like such a big thing for a band and it would be a dream to a, Br a british States. musician like ever since the beatles it's like to say you've played a gig in america is the one it's such a I mean? bucket list thing to yeah. do a u.s tour isn't it yeah. yeah does it help that i know some of the organizers of some of these festivals <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So hopefully all the craziness in the world will calm down and we can go back to doing what we'd love to do. Yes, awesome. absolutely. Party so, at your place. <laughs> what's that? Party at your place when we get out of there, yeah? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> all are welcome. <laughs> well, listen, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to talk to me. You've got a new album coming out next in 2021 yeah summer 2021 so, yeah uh, so we're, we're sort of aiming for the end of july for yeah so it's called pucker sounds um we're going to have some new singles out in january yeah. yeah so awesome yeah. awesome for the fans something to look forward to in the meantime absolutely yeah awesome well you guys have a great week and That's stay good. warm and thanks so much for talking to me you stay warm as well hope the <laughs> jacket does that. the job <laughs> yes, I will stay in this. <laughs> Thank you so much, Angie. Nice one, Angie. Take care. Take care. My Take pleasure, care. guys. Bye. Bye.